Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at a MacBook. Uh, this is a MacBook A1989 and this doesn't turn on. So a customer got in touch with me a couple of weeks ago and basically said to me that he had a MacBook Pro A1989 and he took a look inside when it didn't turn on and apparently he's got an exploded capacitor. So it's going to be rather interesting to see what's going on with this and try and figure out why that capacitor has apparently exploded. But if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe, turn on the bell notifications and that way you don't miss any future uploads. And also if you find any use out of these videos whatsoever, then feel free to head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking your existing Amazon Prime account to Twitch and then you can subscribe to the channel for free and that really helps me out. It gives me around about 250 every month and it goes towards buying new equipment and making videos where I buy stuff to fix myself and I really really appreciate it. But with that being said let's see what we can do about this MacBook Pro. So like I said this is the 1989 it's a fairly new MacBook and I'm going to plug in the USB-C ammeter and we get 5 volts and okay it's not bumping up to is it 20 volts or 18 volts I'm not sure but either way it's not bumping up to the correct voltage 5 volts isn't enough to charge a laptop 5 volts will be typically for a small USB device or a phone or something like that and as you can see here this is flickering between 0, 0.00 and 0, 0.05 amps so that's telling me that it's trying to power cycle. So what I mean by that is basically it's trying to turn on or it's trying to do something and then it's saying, nope, there's something wrong and it's stopping itself and it just goes through that constantly. Okay, so I'm very likely going to be using a piece of software by Paul Daniels. Paul is a very good MacBook technician. I highly recommend checking him out. And he also created the Flex Board View and Open Board View which is a board view software. Pretty much most people who work on MacBooks use it, but you can use it for other schematics as well if you can get the board views. But basically, you've got the board view software, and then I'm likely going to be using repair.wiki, which is run by Lewis Rossman as well. So two absolutely fantastic guys in the MacBook repair community, and I highly recommend checking them both out. There'll be a link to both of their channels in the video description. And uh, yeah, let's just see what we can do about this, shall we? So I'm going to be using the P5, the Pentel 5, to remove these screws here. And then I believe it's a Torx T4 when we get into the motherboard itself. I could be wrong. I don't work on many MacBooks, but I do technically offer it as a service. So if you do have a MacBook that you need repairing, Feel free to get in touch and I might be able to help. Okay, okay, so yeah, these are not overly complex machines in terms of the board layout and things. They're generally fairly straightforward. So, okay, I can see the exploded capacitor right there. And I spoke to Paul Daniels a few days ago and he actually said just remove it and leave it. But you know, if I can find a donor board with one on, then I'll probably put it back. But let's have a look at that under the microscope quickly and we'll see just how bad that actually is. But before I do that, I am going to remove the battery. So I want to remove the battery first because we don't want to do anything to this. We don't even want to probe it while the battery is plugged in because we could short something out. What could cause damage to, for example, the CPU or the GPU. So we don't want to do any kind of probing or anything like that unless we have the battery removed. Um, let's try a torque. Ah, yep, yeah, there we go. Torque T3. Okay. And um, why have I just gone for that one? Eh, oh well, it can stay out for now. <laughs> so I unscrewed that one and then went for that one for some reason on the opposite side of the clip. Yeah, that's my bad. I think this is the battery connector. Could be wrong. But I think it could be. Is it? No, it can't be. 
Oh, wait, never mind. Well, <laughs> I guess that's my my own fault for not paying attention. Don't think that one's a battery connector. Might be under here. So I've never been in one of these. Ah, yeah, there it is. There it is. It's under there. I've never been in one of these. This will be the first time messing with one. Now, I do say to people, don't ever practice on a customer board. However, one thing that you have to remember here is that is kind of subjective. If you've already got experience with other things, then, you know, working on something that you're not familiar with is fine because you generally going to be competent, competent enough to work on it. But that said, if you've never worked on a device at all, then, you know, I wouldn't recommend working on customer devices. Okay, the battery's removed, so let's have a look over here and see what's going on. And, ooh, yeah, that looks pretty rough, doesn't it? Okay, well, to be fair, we might be able to just remove this without taking the board out. Just if, just by using the soldering iron. I will say that you don't want to be using hot air in that area. So, yeah, I don't recommend doing this with hot air. But if you use the soldering iron, it should be absolutely fine. Because you're not using any heat around the battery. You know, you're just using very, very localised heat. So, I'm going to remove this while it's still inside the case. By adding some leaded solder. I could actually add low melt solder, but... Nah. And yeah, look at that. Hey, <laughs> ping. Well, quickest repair ever. So the good thing is the case is metal. So you don't need to worry about melting the case. Okay, so that's removed. Let's just clean up these pads. This could be the quickest and easiest repair I've ever done. So the reason I didn't use flux there is because the solder has got flux in it. I use Kesta 6337. So it's got flux already in it, it's got a flux core. It's a little bit awkward to get to while it's inside the case. But it's fine. Alright, let's just see if it does anything different. I, I mean, I do plan on replacing that. But let's just see if it does anything different. So, are we going to get any kind of change here, or do we have to take the board out? So, let's just hook up the battery. Okay, so everything is hooked up exactly how it was, apart from the clips. Do we get any change? 5 volts, 0.11 amps, 0.32 amps, come on, there we go, 20 volts, let's go. And that he's charging fan spin baby do we get anything on the screen there we go apple logo baby let's go <laughs> all right that is awesome i've been filming for 13 minutes including my intro messing around and messing with my cameras quickest repair ever all right i'm going to see if i've got a donor board with that capacitor on but i did get told by paul daniels who i would consider a macbook expert that i wouldn't need to replace it okay i didn't actually replace that connector but never mind but i did get told by paul daniels that i don't need to replace it one little capacitor and that will be what a two pound part two dollar part whatever it is 
if that. Okay, so according to the Open Board View software, this is the cap that I'm looking at, and it's C6581, which is PP bus G3 hot underscore speaker amp. What speaker is it? Uh, I don't know, because Paul Daniel's software never works. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I think it's the right speaker amp. It doesn't quite fit on the screen there. Uh, I think it's the right speaker amp. But uh, yeah, C6581 and C6581 is a 33 microfarad capacitor. So a donor board, what I've got in front of me is the 820-00923, it's the A1706. So let's see if I can find a 33 microfarad. Apparently there's three on this board. C3504. Uh, it's the same cap, tank poly. So let's open the board view and we'll find C3504. Here it is. So I'm going to take that off a donor board. And uh, what do you know? It's a PP bus G3 hot cap. So I'm going to find this on the donor board. So it's going to be on the back of the board, bottom left hand side. And it's a group of two right next to an IC. I've got it. It's going to be this one just here. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so let's first of all clean this up. So I'm going to warm the board up in that direct area. Not going to put much heat on it, just going to warm it up a little bit. It's going to help with the cleaning. Put very minimal heat. And then the liquid I've just put on there is isopropyl alcohol. And it's 99.9% .9 lab grade isopropyl alcohol. Um, there we go, a little bit of solder there. And there we go. Tiny bit more IPA. There we go. I'm just going to give it a bit more of a scrub here. So the reason I'm not taking the board out is because I can't even see any liquid damage indicators have gone off. So I don't believe it's liquid damage. I think this cap has just exploded for the sake of exploding. And I believe that it's going to be fine. There we go. A little bit wonky. That's my trademark. 
All right, and here we go. So time to put this back together fully. Okay, okay, here we go. Okay, so we should be booting up. The battery's probably completely dead. 20 volts, half an amp, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. There we go, and boom. We are charging. There's that chime I'm looking for. And there's that Apple logo. Absolutely fantastic. One simple capacitor. I didn't even need to take the board out of the case. So as you can see, it is booted there. I do need to cover names, obviously. But yeah, easiest repair I think I've ever had to do. And um, this is working. I do need to give it a full test, make sure that there's no other issues with it. So I'll need to get the password of the customer for that if he wants me to perform a full test. But other than that, super, super happy. And um, this is the easiest money I think I've ever made. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'll always do my best to answer. If you do want to organise a repair, there'll be a link in the video description where you can book in the repair or get in touch using the contact page. I'll be more than happy to take on the repair for you. And if you enjoy this type of content and you want to see more, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. If you want to support me, if you find these videos useful in any way, shape or form, there'll be a Patreon link in the video description. You can head to Patreon and become a Patreon supporter. You can become a channel member by using the join button below the video. And you can also donate directly using the donate buttons in the video description as well. If you want any of the tools that I use in the workshop, there's some Amazon affiliate links down in the video description and they help the channel as well. I do get a little bit of commission every time you use those. Or you can just simply head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber. Link your Amazon Prime account if you've got one and then you can do it for free. It doesn't cost you a penny, but it really helps me. It gives me around about 250 every month and it's a massive help to the channel. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Really easy fix. Fantastic way to finish the day. Until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.